Hello and welcome. My name is Jim, this is my Tacoma, and over the next two episodes I'm going to give you a thorough tour of everything you want to know about this truck. In episode one here, I'm going to be talking about the truck itself and everything I've done to it, everything I've changed, why I did it, and how it is working for me. And in episode two, I'm going to be talking about the homemade camper that I built here. I'm going to tell you everything that went into the design and manufacturing and how well it's been working for me. So stay tuned. Now to start off, this is a 2013 Toyota Tacoma, the TRD off-road package. So that means it has the rear diff locker and all the other uh, off-road electronic bits. I've owned it for around three years now and it's been absolutely amazing. Hasn't given me any problems, does what I ask of it, great truck. Um, it's not the first Toyota or off-road vehicle I've owned. I've had a few 4Runners and another Tacoma in the past. Uh, the last one I had was a really nicely built third gen 4Runner that was unfortunately totaled in a hit and run. Uh, so that's what led me to get this, and I've loved it ever since. It's been a great truck. The color is called Spruce Mica Green, and this took me actually quite a while to find. It's a pretty rare color. It was only available for three years, from 2012 to 2014, and I had to go, what, eight states away from where I was living at the time to, to get this truck. Uh, but, I mean, it's a great color. I can't not stare at it. I mean, I get compliments all the time. It's a beautiful color and I love it. So anyway, let's start getting into some of the details of the front end here. This bumper is a recent addition. If you've seen one of my recent videos about when my winch exploded, which I'll link to up here, uh, you will understand why I have this. I used to have a Pelfrey built aluminum bumper that was great, worked good for a long time. Uh, but this one is the C4 Fab second gen Tacoma bumper. And it's a new recent release of theirs, it looks really good. I did have to do a couple modifications to make it work, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I did have to trim the top here underneath the grill just to make it fit a little better. I drilled a couple license plate holes, um, and because my fenders are trimmed over there, I did have to trim the ends off the, the wings of the bumper. But no big deal, it all worked out, and it's a great looking bumper. Uh, for lights, I have uh, full Baja lights. And in the past, I've used a lot of budget lights on all of my past builds. And frankly, they've been great. Uh, but this bumper is kind of made to work with the Baja stuff. So I went ahead and treated myself and I have all those. So this, these are the Squadron Sport wide cornering uh, fog lights. And they're really good because I don't have any ditch lights. So I really like those. They give a nice wide beam pattern. Uh, and then this is the combo pattern S8 30 inch light bar. Uh, this has been a nice upgrade over the Pelfrey built bumper that I had because it only had room for a 20 inch light bar and this one has room for a 30 so a little bit more light i'll take it uh, now for the winch here i have the smitty belt xrc no it isn't now that's my old one um, this is the smitty belt x2o 10k it's a synthetic rope wireless remote waterproof and i haven't needed it yet but if you've seen my last videos i, I use the winch uh, anyway I also, to go with that, I have some Factor 55 stuff, they're fairly, and the, uh, which one is this one? The flat link, this is the flat link. Uh, yeah, they've been used a lot. I used them on the previous bumper and winch, and now they're here. So, uh, along with the bumper, I've also got skids running the full length of the vehicle. Those were all from Pelfrey Built, and they're still working great. Uh, I got full skids all the way back through the gas tank, so. And on the upper section up here, I have a TRD Pro Grill, and this came on the vehicle when I purchased it pre-owned, and that was before the time of the Chinese knockoffs, so I think the previous owner shelled out some big bucks for the real one, not that it really matters, uh, and then I went ahead and got a color-matched grill surround to go with it. These lights here that I have are the TRD Pro version of the Tacoma headlights, and they're basically the same as the stock headlights, they just have uh, black trim on them and look pretty good. The reason I have them is I used to have a projector retrofit and I didn't really like the projectors. I found that they uh, had too sharp of a cutoff. I couldn't really see anything above them. And I had a lot of reliability issues with them. They'd come unplugged. So I got rid of the projectors and just got a new set of the TRD Pro headlights. And their headlights, what can I say about them? Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to suspension, wheels, and tires. All right, let's start up front here with the wheels and tires. Uh, starting with the wheels, these are the FN Wheels 5 Star, the 17 inch version. And I really like these for two reasons. One, they're insanely lightweight. Same with the tires, which I'll get to in a second. 
which really helps with acceleration and braking. But the other reason I really like these is they have like ideal specs for fitting these 35s on the truck. And I intend to do a separate video about fitting 35s and you know ideal wheel specs and alignment settings and where you need to trim and where you don't. Um, but anyway, I'll get to that later. But the wheel specs here are they're just perfect for fitting 35s. Uh, the tires themselves are 315 70 17 Goodyear Duratrax, which is basically a 35, 34 and a half. Um, I've had many sets of these tires and they are fantastic. They're good on the road, they're quiet, they're really good on the ice, they're still really good off road. It's a nice cross between like a mud terrain and an all terrain tire. I've been really happy with them and I, I would highly recommend these tires. Now, um, with a tire of this size, obviously, if you live at elevation or drive a lot of hills, you will notice a significant power decrease, and I did as well. So I went ahead and re-geared the truck. I am running on 456 gears, and I, for quite a while before I did the gears, I was mulling between, do I want 456 or 488, something around there, and ended up going with 456 because I do a lot of highway driving. Now, this isn't my commuter or anything like that, but a lot of the weekend trips I do, there is quite a, a lot of highway driving involved and there's some bigger trips I'd like to do as well so I didn't want to be you know hamstring myself on the highway limiting my rpms or my top speed and not that I go that fast anyway um, but I found that the 456 gear ratio for this generation of Tacoma has been uh, perfect absolutely love it now let's move on to suspension uh, actually while we're talking about tires I'll talk about clearance so you'll notice that I've trimmed the fenders quite a bit and the reason that I did that was actually not necessarily for tire clearance. It sort of was, but not really. Uh, I think that the factory Tacoma fender flares are just huge and disproportionate. They look weird. So I trimmed about three inches off of these, quite a bit. So what you'll notice is I actually don't have a lot of lift if you factor that in. I have, you know, maybe an inch or two at the most. Uh, which, anyway, I'll get to the suspension in a minute. But as far as other tire clearance things I've done, uh, I've tweaked the suspension uh, alignment a little bit, and again, I'll get to that in the 35s video. Uh, and then I did a cab mount chop here, which is pretty much required, and then a little bit of trimming. Anyway, on these fender flares that I trimmed, I broke a few of the clips when I was getting them out, which is pretty standard because you're kind of getting rid of a lot of the mounting points when you trim them like this. So I have these stainless steel flatheads on all the fender flares, just kind of holding them on. I'm not a huge fan of the look, but it keeps them on the truck so I'll take it. Anyway, let's talk suspension now. So to go along with what I've been talking about where you want to adjust your alignment settings for fitting 35s, uh, adjustable upper control arms are a huge huge help for that and I have the specialty products company adjustable upper control arms, SPC arms, and they are great. I really like them A because they're adjustable of course, uh, but I also really like them because they are sealed and greasable so it's a true ball joint, high articulation joint. So you don't have the longevity problems that you do with polyurethane and uniballs on a lot of the other aftermarket control arms. Anyway, so they are great. They still work with all the extended travel coilovers, which I have as well. These are the standard King 2.5 inch coilovers with a 600 pound spring. And they've been great. I really like them. They ride nicely. The only thing I don't like about the Kings is they use spherical bearings on the top and bottom mounting points. And I've had to replace the bottom ones quite a few times. I really wish that these uh, shock manufacturers would allow people to get bushings with them, rubber bushings, because I'm not a race truck driver and I don't replace my parts all the time. So, But other than that, the Kings, they ride really nice and they're high quality stuff. One more thing I wanted to talk about up front before we keep moving down the truck is uh, on this fender here, I used to have a snorkel and I just recently removed it. So if you want to see that video, it'll be up here. Uh, anyway, I replaced it with what's called a cowl intake and I'll show you that here in just a second. But um, if you watch that video, you'll understand why I had the snorkel and why I got rid of it as well. But anyway, this fender here is all new. I replaced the antenna with this little plug here because it just looks better. Uh, and anyway, let's go ahead and pop the hood so I can show you the new intake setup. So the first thing you'll notice is I have these hood struts here. These are from Redline Tuning and they are hood struts. 
they uh, it's really nice though don't have to use a little prop rod so those have been good uh, anyway this is the intake I was talking about and I've got more info in the other uh, cowl intake video that I did but basically it goes from the factory air filter housing up into the cowl here and it gets nice clean high pressure air up there it's protected from above from water coming in so I'm not concerned at all about water getting into the intake or anything like that it's yeah, still got the uh, factory air filter but it's a really nice short runner length intake so it's been great so far last thing under here I also have this North Star deep cycle battery and it's got pretty insane stats on it considering it's a factory replacement battery it's got like double all those numbers but I only have the one deep cycle and I really don't feel the need for anything beyond that the, re the reason being is that I drive the truck enough that it gets the battery gets topped off enough and everything that I have that would draw power has a low voltage cutoff so a dash cam fridge all kinds of stuff it's all got low voltage cutoffs and in the event of the battery do getting drained I have a lipo jump pack so anyway a single deep cycle is really all that I feel that I need on this truck I don't think I'll ever do a dual battery all right, moving on down the truck now, we've got these 4x Innovations rock sliders. And this is like a cheap, weld-together rock slider kit. Now, when I say cheap, that doesn't mean bad. It's just um, when it's a weld-together kit, you just get the bare components and make it all yourself. So as long as you have access to a welder, it works really well. Uh, they've taken quite a bit of abuse. I have to touch them up multiple times a year, which I'm probably due for again, actually. All right, now moving on to the rear suspension. I've got a decent amount going on, so I'll take it one bit at a time. The big ticket item you'll notice is the factory shock mount relocate from Banff. And this has probably been the best bang for buck item that I've done to the entire truck, which is saying something because it was a lot of money. Uh, basically what it does is it relocates the shock mounts top and bottom so that you can fit a 12 inch travel shock. And that is awesome. There's been such a massive increase in wheel articulation, wheel travel. I've got these specifically valved for the truck. They ride awesome. Highly recommend that, you know, if you're going to look at doing a, a lift on a Tacoma budget for one of these, it is worth the money. Trust me. Now, beyond that, I've got uh, the OME Dakar leaf springs, just the basic standard duty uh, because I like to keep the truck fairly low so I can still fit in the garage. And again, remember, I've, I've trimmed the fenders quite a bit, so the truck is actually relatively sitting low. Uh, beyond that, uh, on the leaf springs, I replaced all the bushings that came with it with factory Toyota rubber bushings, because again, like I was talking about up front, I hate polyurethane. Um, to, for mounting the leaf springs to the axle, I've done a U-bolt flip kit with the Timbrin bump stops. And the reason you do a U-bolt flip is it gains you a lot of ground clearance underneath the axle there. And the Timbrin bump stops have been great. That's um, a really nice rate of bump stop. They work really well. They're, the height is positioned like perfectly just to engage where I'd like it. Now I've got the same thing up front, and they work really good. Uh, one last thing on the suspension in the rear is I replaced the factory shackle hangers with a heavy-duty version from Banff as well. Same brand as where I got the shock mount relocate. And the reason you want to do that is because the factory shackle hangers are very weak. So if you're coming off of some ledge and you smack, uh, smack your shackle hangers, the factory ones can bend, and it's a suspension mounting point. You really don't want that bending. Uh, so these I've given quite a lot of abuse to and they've held up. They're solid. They're total beef. So those have worked really good. There is still a poly bushing in there, which is the only poly bushing on the truck. And it's one of the only spots that makes noise on the truck. So uh, I'd like to eventually find a replacement for that if I can, but it works great as is. Now, as far as tire clearancing in the rear, I did the fender trimming mostly for aesthetics. Cause like I said, I didn't like how bulky the Tacoma fenders were. There's really not a lot of fender trimming or anything needed to clear the tires in the rear. Maybe a little bit up here at the front of the wheel well, but really not much. It's the front where all the work goes into fitting those kind of tires. Anyway, we'll keep on moving back and we'll talk about this rear bumper here. All right, this bumper is from Pelfrey Bill, and I got this like just a few months before their entire business imploded and ruined everyone's lives. But as bad as they were running a business, they made pretty good products. So anyway, this is their high clearance rear bumper. I did have to trim the bed sides to make it fit. And I had to trim the ends of it as well because I'd uh, cut the fenders. So that was all the modification needed to make it fit. 
Uh, again, same with all the other skid plates and stuff. It's taken a lot of abuse. I touch it up every once in a while, but it's, it's stout. Uh, it does have spots for lights here. I haven't done that because I've got dust lights up on top of the camper. I don't know why I put them up there. It probably would have been easier to do it here, but I did. Anyway, so that's the rear bumper. I do not have the factory spare tire mounted here. I have it up in the bed of the truck because I just can't fit a 35 down in here. So there's a few other exterior things I want to talk about, and then we'll move on to the interior. All right, this roof rack that I have here is from Sherpa Equipment Company, and they worked with me to make a custom length rack to work with the camper that I built here. And it has been great. It's really strong. It's got a nice backbone mounting structure and it's just been a great little roof rack. Obviously, I only have traction boards mounted to it, but uh, it's a great roof rack. Helps with the aerodynamics of the camper and everything. Uh, speaking of the traction boards, these are from Rotapax. It's a new product of theirs. Haven't really gotten to test them out yet. I bought them after the video where my winch exploded, and of course, I haven't needed them since. But I'm sure I'll use them a lot this winter, so I'll be able to test them then. Uh, let's see, let's go to the other side here where I can talk about the awning. This awning that I have is the Tapui six foot, just their standard, you know, go straight out. It's not any kind of bat wing or 270, just a regular awning. Uh, it's been working great. I made these custom mounts for it that work with the extrusion on the camper. And it's just, uh, it's an awning. It works pretty good. Now, one last thing that we'll talk about on the outside here is this radio antenna that I have. And I have it mounted to a motorized mount and that it is completely unnecessary, I'll agree with you there. But it's nice because, like I said, I still have to fit in the garage. So with lowering the antenna here, I can still fit in the garage, but I can raise it up and get great reception and great transmitting ability. It's uh, powered electronically with a switch, so I'll go ahead and hop inside the truck now and show you how that works. All right, I am quickly losing sunlight here, so I'm just gonna go over some of the highlights back here in the bed and then we'll move on. Uh, first of all, I have these bedside stiffeners, which are vital. The reason that you need them is because with the weight on the top of the bedside, it can push it out and then your latches won't latch anymore. It'll fatigue the corners of the bed. Just bad news, you don't want that happening. Uh, and then, like I said, I have the spare tire mounted in here with a Wilco off-road tire mount. And it's really the only place I could put it because I don't want to swing out on the bumper and I can't fit it underneath the truck. So that's where it goes. Uh, I also have a fridge. This one is from Costway. It's basically the, one of the cheapest 12 volt fridges you can get. And it's been working great, honestly. I've used it all summer and it's been a lot nicer than a cooler. And it's pretty cheap. It's, you know, about the same price as a Yeti cooler anyway. So might as well. All right, for the interior, there's not a whole lot going on in here. I try to keep it relatively simple. That being said, I do have a few nice uh, items I'd like to touch on. One is that I've set up a custom faceplate mount here for my radio antenna. It's an ICOM 2730, and there's a cubby hole here normally. So I made this faceplate that the radio can attach to and just kind of wedges itself, clips into that where that cubby hole used to be. And that's been working great so far. It's a really nice location for it. Right next to the radio, I have the switch for the antenna on the outside that goes up and down. Um, the other cool thing I've done in here is I 3D printed these little mounts here for RAM mount balls. Now I normally I don't have anything on them, but I do have mounts for things like tablets where I can mount uh, that or my phone. And I've got topo maps all downloaded that I'll usually have this up when I'm out on the trail or just out exploring, trying to figure out where, where I want to go. So that sits there real nice. I can look at it. Uh, other things I've done in here is I have a nice couple pair of switches here that run the lights on the outside and they're like replica Toyota switches so they just like fit right in the spot and look really good. I also have uh, lifted the seats up and it's not because I'm short, I'm right at six foot tall. The reason is uh, I think that all mid-sized trucks just have a terrible seating position. You know the floor and the seat are too close to each other. So by lifting the seat up, you can have a little bit more of an upright seating position. It's a lot more comfortable. I used to have a lot of leg cramps and stuff before I lifted the seats up. Now the, the seat spacers are from Desert Does It Off-Road. And on the driver's side, I also have a panel that I can mount things to, which I don't have anything on yet, but I may do something like a fire extinguisher or whatever. Um, 
Down here I also have the speaker for the radio because it's the radio itself is mounted under the seat and it's kind of quiet down there. And then the, uh, the microphone itself is there as well. So that's what was going on up here. Now I also have um, a dash cam, which isn't really that noteworthy. Everyone should have one, honestly. And the last thing is I have a scan gauge here. Now that's just like a diagnostic tool. It's useful to see my fuel mileage. I can look at temperatures or pressures of anything that I want to. I can scan and clear check engine codes, which I don't really get anyway. But uh, it's really nice to have there and I like it. Uh, one other thing that I have under the back seat is a little canister that I've made that has all the TPMS sensors for the tire pressure system. And the reason I did that is because I don't want the light to come on on the dash every time I air down. So I just put them all in there, pressurize the whole system to 35, and I don't have to worry about the light anymore. So that's been good. Um, still on the factory Toyota radio here. Um, one thing I may upgrade is this. I would really like something with like Apple CarPlay and a little more reliable Bluetooth if we're being honest. But the rest of the interior of the truck is, it works great for me. Uh, and like I said, I usually don't have anything attached to these ram mount balls, just there by itself. So anyway, that's the interior of the truck. All right, everybody, and that is it. If you are looking for more detailed information, I do have a build thread, which will be linked to in the description. It's got uh, a lot more information, a lot more specs, uh, how-tos on things I've done. So check that out. It's a lot of good information in there. Uh, part two for the camper will be out right after this, so go check that out as well. And uh, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you liked it. And if you didn't, downvote the shit out of it. I'll see you next time.